Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and here we are starting our next chapter on India, the third of our four river civil ancient river civilizations. Uh, let's so let's go ahead and let's get started with this. India. Words almost can't describe India. It's so huge. It's the world's second most populous country with over a billion people. There's deserts, there's mountains, there's plains, there's jungles. It goes up high at in the Himalayas all the way down to near the equator. There's hurricanes, cyclones, huge rivers. Two of the wor world's major religions are there. Uh, over 4,000 years of history. There's Bollywood. There's Indian takeout. There's the world's largest democracy. There's so much going on in India that in reality this chapter we're going to do will not do justice to how big and how important India is in world history, but we're just going to skim over the basics uh, with it as best as we can so we can explore India and understand it better. So let's go ahead and get started with the notes. India is unique in that we consider it the world's only subcontinent. Okay, The only subcontinent. And a subcontinent is a large land mass that is smaller than a continent. And India, for our purposes, is actually the world's only subcontinent. We have our seven continents, and then there's India. Now, there are several reasons for this. Uh, the British, when they ruled India in the 1700s and 1800s, kind of coined the idea that India was a subcontinent. But the other reasons are also geographic in nature. At one time, India was its own continent, an island floating out in the Indian Ocean. And over the last several millions of years, it's actually slammed into Asia and is pushed up at this plate boundary right here. And here's the Eurasian plate, here's the Indian plate. And so what's happening is the Himalaya mountains have formed. And as India pushes into Asia, the mountains get higher. So, you know, Mount Everest right here, the world's largest mountain, is actually growing every day. Now, it might grow by like maybe a centimeter or two a year, but it's still growing. Um, so India is the world's only subcontinent, and like I said, where it meets the Eurasian plate is the world's highest mountain range, and that's known as the Himalayas, and that's what separates India from Asia. There are two major rivers in India that we need to look at, uh, one of whom is the Ganges River, which is this large river right here. It flows into Bangladesh, and as you can see, it flows and flows and flows. It goes up and actually comes up here into the mountains. That's the Ganges River. The other one right here is actually in modern-day Pakistan, and that's known as the Indus River. And yes, that's where we get the name India from. And the Indus River, which flows from the Himalayas to the Indian Ocean, is located, like I said, in present-day Pakistan, and is considered to be the cradle of ancient Indian civilization. Now, you might be asking yourself, Mr. Klein, why is the Indus River Valley not in India? Well, India and Pakistan are actually relatively recent uh, creations. Pakistan only became a country in 1947, and it mainly consisted of Muslims who lived in India, who when the British uh, l gave India its independence, split and headed over here. And then there's another group that was over here in the modern day country of Bangladesh. But all of this stuff we kind of consider India for our purposes of geography and culture. Now, India has a very hot and humid climate. And it's heavily influenced by a weather, weather pattern that we call the monsoon. And the monsoon is a seasonal wind pattern that causes wet and dry seasons. So what ends up happening in India is you have six months of dry weather, and then you have six months of wet weather. And in India, the wet season is in the summer, and you have rain that falls by the foot. And the dry season is in the wintertime. And as a result, things are very off and on in terms of precipitation. Uh, so let's look at the wind patterns. Okay, so what happens is during the winter, this warm, moist air comes in from the Arabian Sea and in the Indian Ocean. And the Himalayan mountains are so tall, it kind of traps right here the moisture. And so it causes rain and thunderstorms, much like what we have in Louisiana in the summertime, uh, the summer thunderstorms, except this happens all over the subcontinent. And then what happens in the wintertime is when it cools off, the wind turns going from out of the south, it goes from the north, and dry air keeps on coming from the Himalayan mountains, and it dries out the land. Now, how drastic is the monsoon season? Well, here's the Western Ghat Mountains, which 
let's look right here. That's this mountain range right here. And so here's a panoramic photo that I wanted to show you. So here's the difference between the two. See, this is the rainy season in the summertime. Well, let's look at it in the same mountains in the dry season. Okay, pretty big difference, right? Wet, dry, wet, dry. Okay, obviously, a lot of rainfall falls for that much vegetation to grow. And so that's the geography of India. It's dominated by the monsoon season. There's two major rivers, the Indus River and then the Ganges River, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the next several lessons. Now, the early civilizations of India, um, the first one was the Harappan civilization, which developed along the Indus River Valley in Pakistan. And archaeologists believe that the Harappan civilization thrived between 2300 BC and 1700 BC, so about 4,000 to about 3,700 years ago. And the cities were very advanced, okay? It's so advanced that most houses actually had indoor plumbing, okay? And they had neat streets and things like that. And so the Harappans, let's look, let's go ahead and let's go to the map and let's look at uh, the cities of Harappa and the larger city, Mohenjo-Daro. So we zoom in to the actual site and it's in this area right near the little town of Harappa and so what we see are these buildings that are still left over okay and there's a drain and there's a well and there's some areas here's some ruins with some bricks that have been restored and Harappa and also here's walking along the path and here's more ruins of it the larger of the two though that's the first civilization that was discovered the other one was actually Mohenjo-Daro which numbered in the hundreds of thousands of people living there and so this is the civilization right here at Mohenjo-Daro and so here's the ruin see how big this is um, and we have and we have this more pictures of the ruins we have large well planned out well laid out streets uh, houses that houses that are well laid out and for each person to live in it's a large courtyard here you notice the streets very narrow but and here's a drain right here this with the plumbing and these streets and small wells and this is the actual inside of houses you can see the bricks look a lot like our own houses in our in our own homes. Okay, and here's the air pass space that because it's so warm it allows air to move through convection in order to cool the houses. And so this, and here's a statue tower and stuff in the area, and the actual museum uh, with some writing about Mahinjadaro, but it was one of the largest cities in actually in Mohenjo-Daro. So that's the Harappan civilization and the Harappan civilization was very important because they developed a system of weights and measures uh, like pounds, kilometers, metric, things like that considered to be the world's first standard system of weights and measures as well as India's first system of writing but the thing about the Harappan civilization is we don't know what happened to them uh, because the system of writing has never been translated by historians so we don't know why the Harappan civilization collapsed there might be ideas of, uh, of climate change or collapse in food supply disease but we're not quite sure and until we can translate the Harappan writing we don't know so that's the Harappans but the major influence on Indian civilization with the Aryans the Aryans were a people group from Central Asia and they moved into the Indus and Ganges river valleys uh, by about 1200 BC or about 3000 years ago and so they came up from around here around the Caucasus mountains in southern Russia to Ukraine and they slowly moved through Iran around the Caspian Sea and this way and they invaded slash uh, migrated into India and pushed through and met and married and intermarried with the uh, people and the Aryans lived in small communities led by a leader called the Raja and now if you've ever heard of the Raj uh, as the in terms of India that is what uh, the Indians called the British rule the Raj and and that comes from that word and the Aryans were really influential and their religion which became known as Hinduism uh, really changed Indian civilization and the Aryans spoke a language that we call Sanskrit and it's ancient India's most influential language and much of the knowledge of Aryan history is down to Sanskrit writings and records being translated by historians and here's an example of the Rig Veda, which is a Rig Veda rather, which is a 
traditional Hindu uh, religious verse and it's actually written in the Sanskrit language and the Sanskrit language has actually been pretty stable in these last 3,000 years because it was spoken by the Aryans when they first uh, brought on and with the establishment of Hinduism uh, and a written language was formed but more importantly it was passed down from generation to generation uh, through these religious poems and songs by word of mouth even today uh, young priests have to speak and recite these poems word for word and as a result the Sanskrit language is able to stay intact from generation to generation even today so here you go this is the first half of our lesson about the geography of India India is a subcontinent uh, it's not quite a full-size continent uh, because uh, it's adjoined to Asia because the plate moved. The Himalayan mountains are very important as is the Indus River here in Pakistan and the Ganges River right here. India's weather is based on the monsoons which leaves you with a wet season and a dry season like we saw right here wet season dry season where all the rainfall comes in a short amount of time. The first civilization was the Harappans in the Indus River Valley. They were really advanced. They had indoor plumbing. Their largest city had hundreds of thousands of people. And the group of people which most influenced ancient India were the Aryans who came from Central Asia about 3,000 years ago. And their language called Sanskrit is used even today mainly through memorized texts and stuff like that. So that's the first half of this lesson with your notes or if you're watching this on your own this is it for the first lesson. And as always if you have any questions please let me know and thanks for watching. Oh,